Girl, like, how do you manage to do everything that you do? I mean, you're a nursing student first of all, then you're working at the front desk. You even have time to exercise. And look at you, girl, you are engaged. How are you managing to do all of that? Like, wow, this is one of the questions that I get asked a lot by students or by my colleagues that I work with. And they just wonder, how do I do it all? And this video is not for me to brag about all the things that I was able to accomplish while being a nursing student. It was a personal choice for me to be involved in as many things as I was and also because of circumstances and things like that. So I'm here to tell you how I was able to balance all of that. It doesn't mean that you have to be involved in all of these things. But if you just feel that life is just busy or nursing is just a lot, university is just putting too much on you, I'm going to be giving advice on how I was able to manage what I was involved in and how you can manage your life going forward i think one of the most popular words that people love to throw around when they're talking about balancing different things in our lives is having a balanced life so how i would define a balanced life is when how we live reflects the different aspects of the different spheres of our lives and it shows that they're in the right amount and proportion relative to that time or as seasons as we love to call it so that means at one point in time one sphere of my life might be at 45 percent while another is at 20 percent it honestly is like a pie chart where you are dedicating a certain percentage of your mental and physical capacity to that different sphere of your life and it will constantly be changing so since we all got the understanding of what a balanced lifestyle is i'm going to be giving you 10 tips or the 10 things that i did that made sure that i I actually was kept saying that I was actually prioritizing the most important things and just you know being successful in everything that I was doing. One of the big reasons why I think this discussion is important is because university honestly is the best years of your life and I know this is such an old people thing to say because I know a lot of our parents or those that are older they love saying this but honestly it is as someone who's gone through four years and they're literally finished honestly are the best years and as much as we're there to study to get our degree that is obviously the most important thing is but we need to be able to allow ourselves able to discover ourselves to able to enjoy things that come with university university life the proceedings the events and everything that happens with university as a result we need to be making sure that we are functioning optimally and productively in all these different fears so that we can actually enjoy the whole process of university so that we're not just stuck in this bubble of just it's all school it's all school and we never have fun and we leave university and we regret the four years the five years six years that we actually didn't use productively so the first thing that made me as productive and as successful as i was is i prioritized the things that allowed me to be productive so that was exercise that was sleep and having a time with my heavenly father which is god so the first one that was a big one for me was exercise because it allowed me to be more energized allowed me to de-stress lifting those weights running it really allowed me to just all the stresses and all the anxiety that i had to just flow out it allowed me to able to participate with other people network you know have fun with people and just de-stress and do something that's good for your body obviously you look physically good but also physically mentally emotionally you honestly feel really good and then sleep i really hate all-nighters i think the most all-nighters that i've done is like five like after I left high school, I told myself all nighters are not a thing, so I really prioritized my sleep. I rarely slept late. If I were to do an all nighter, it would probably up until 12 and not more than that. I think like a full all nighter that I did was like two or three times. So all nighters was a big no no for me. I prioritized my sleep because if I didn't sleep, I was groggy. I had low energy and also I could sense that my mood goes down and you sort of have those depression symptoms where you don't feel like do anything, you're just groggy, just ah, it's not a nice feeling. And also if I didn't sleep well, it affected my exercise and you know, it just didn't go well together. So because I really enjoyed exercise and I like to feel good and alive and not so groggy all the time, it was really important that I prioritize my sleep. Obviously sleep, diet and all of that comes together. And then the last one is obviously having the devotions having communion with god church is a really big important thing for me so saturdays i don't do anything that's my church day i just take that day to rest but also just having devotions especially i love having devotions in the morning at night i feel like i'm too tired to even focus but in the morning because of that mental clarity and also you opening the day with god and say lord 
this day is about to show me flames but just be with me to just allow him to give me strength so for me those things were very important so that's why i really prioritized those three things because it allowed me to be productive so the second thing is to create systems naturally we all have symptoms as much as we might not realize it's a system and the most common one that we all have is our morning routine most of us we wake up it's either you pray or you go straight to the bathroom you pee you wash your face brush your teeth or you shower then you change go to work go to school that is a natural routine that we all have and because it's so natural to us it doesn't take us as long because it's done the same way every single time we don't even think about it we just go through the motion so for me to have those systems it just allowed me to able to just ease into life without having to think okay at this moment what am i meant to be doing so it was very important for me to have systems for things that occurred all the time the third thing is time management and organization as much as we might set up systems we might write out to do lists have planners that look pretty that motivate us and that sort of thing if we ourselves are not going to be organized and actually following those systems they're going to fall apart and i know procrastination is a big enemy for all of us even to those that are the most productive but if you tell yourself that at this time you need to get this done you need to get it done at that point because as much as you're going to plan your life if you're not going to physically make yourself do it it's not going to happen and another trap that i fell into is i try to use both a physical planner and electronic one and it all just became too much for me so keep your systems very simple and to the point so that they're organized that you know where your to-do list you know where to find them and they're always in the same place so that you don't have a piece of paper there that told you you need to be doing this at this time so if you keep it simple organized and you actually manage your time so that you actually do it when you tell yourself to do it do it i know procrastination is a big one but that is one thing that you have to fight but i'll speak about that later on the fourth thing that allowed me to be much more productive is i actually researched on how to be more productive so as much as is productive gurus will tell you that you need to download all these five different apps you need to have a specific planner and that sort of thing keep it simple if you over complicate things and want to have too many things the whole process and the whole system it's just going to make you tired and you're not going to want to follow it so as much as even i myself am telling you guys on how to be productive you're not going to be able to follow all 10 tips that i'm going to give you take what you can from what i'm giving you make it work for yourself but ultimately we all just have to create our own systems but obviously learn from others what they've done and usage to make your own systems better the first thing that made me a bit more productive and successful in all the different spheres that i was involved in is i had to make sacrifices and this one was not easy it's painful especially if you've got a friend who wants you go wants you to go somewhere you've got family that need you somewhere and you've got placements you've got projects you've just got so many things that need your attention at times some spheres had to suffer and you just had to hyper focus on one sphere and that is okay those are sacrifices that unfortunately we have to make and i know we all want that instant gratification if your friend says let's go out you want to go out if the friend says it's an event you want to go family we're going out for dinner you want to go Sometimes we just have to let go of those things. As much as we're all going to have FOMO, it's a real thing. Even if you're an introvert, you're going to have FOMO for certain things. As much as you're going to have it, you're going to have to learn self-discipline and learn to say, at this moment in time, I cannot afford to be doing this. As a result, I have to say no in part. So learning to say no was a big learning curve for me because I'm a super people pleaser. Like I just want to make everyone happy. And sometimes it's at my own detriment because I would sacrifice my own time, energy, money, and all of that to please people, to be at events and that sort of thing. So learning to say no is a big one. I'm still not there yet, but progress over perfection <laughs> and the sixth tip in the same line as you need to make sacrifices you also need to learn to work hard and play hard there's going to be times when projects are just coming at you and just like oh my gosh i cannot keep up and you just have to hyper focus on your school but after things have quieted down a bit then you can go hard you know going out with friends family and all of that but you have to learn to discern when it is the right time to do so because sometimes you might say okay i've i've been working hard but are we really working hard at that point in time and then we lie to ourselves that we are rewarding ourselves with going out or doing this at a certain time 
you really have to be purposeful on the times that you tell yourself okay i'm playing hard or i'm working hard in this time so you are allowed to work hard and play hard but you need to do it in the right proportions and at the right time timing is always of uttermost importance and then just to add on to that as much as we sometimes have to hyper focus and we just have to focus on school it's important that at least once a day you're doing something that you enjoy that brings you joy because it allows you to be energized it increases your mood it allows you to be a bit more productive so for me that was going to the gym that was doing youtube video scripting i just love the whole creative process that comes with writing down steps i'm a very step-by-step -step type of person because honestly school is boring it's tiring it's exhausting especially certain modules that just don't bring you joy at all you just don't see a point in them because trust me you're going to get very excited to want to do that thing either at the end of the day or you're going to start with that thing you're energized you're really happy you know good mood because you've done something that you really love and it just spills on onto everything else that you're going to be doing during the day the seventh thing that allowed me to be productive is i used down times a lot productively so this might not always be effective for everyone because we might not all have downtime but i can promise you have at least 10 to 15 minutes of downtime so for me i traveled a lot i stood in lines a lot you know there was just a lot of waiting and a lot of yeah there was just a lot of dead space in a sense so as a result i would use those times productively to either schedule meetings answer emails uh, even script design thumbnails and that sort of thing literally my phone was my home office it was the office that traveled with me because i could do so much things on my phone i could go through cue cards there was just a lot that i could do during those down times so if you do have down times all those small things that you can do in those 15 minutes 10 minutes use those downtimes trust me it will just take away all the clutter because sometimes i feel like those small duties like oh i need to cut my nails i need to file my nails or i need to email this and stuff like that all those things power up and they make our to-do list look huge so if you can use those downtimes wisely and get rid of all the different clutters it will make your life so much easier and the eighth thing is you need to wake up early i know i know i know not all of us enjoy waking up early but waking up early doesn't have to be 4 a.m. It doesn't have to be 5 a.m. But I would suggest at least an hour or 30 minutes before the time that you actually need to start your day. So for me, 5 a.m., half past 4 was usually the time that would be the most appropriate for me to wake up early. So in that time, I could have my devotions. I could just de-stress and just put myself in the right mindset for the day. And also, this was a time where I would look at, okay, I've done this the previous day. Why do I need to focus on today? And why do I need to prioritize? And why do I need to prioritize for the rest of the day? So just waking up and just planning your life on how it's going to be for the rest of the day. Trust me, it will make you so much more productive because you actually have a direction of how the day is meant to be. Then just waking up and just going through the day, through the emotions and just not having a plan and direction for it. Guys, planning is very important. It allows you to be more productive because there's going to be a lot of dead time that you have and you don't know what to do with it or you're going to be so fluttered and so disorganized during the day because you don't know what is happening so i will usually wake up have my devotions and say okay today i have these modules these are the topics that we're covering today cool these are the notes that i need to take with me these are the books that i need to take with me so just organizing your life and structuring it on what's going to happen that day and maybe you're going to have an event that you need to take an extra shirt with blazer jersey whatever just having that moment where you just gather your thoughts and say okay this day is going to move this this and this way and this is what i need to do right now to plan for this and this and this doing that trust me will be a game changer it doesn't have to be long literally 10 minutes of just planning your day will make you so much more productive than you would think trust me try it but the first thing that you should do is make your bed that's a game changer try it the ninth thing that i use is i maximized on my strength so we all have different strengths or different things that we are good at for me it's planning literally i can take a project and break it down into the most simplest and the literally the littlest thing that needs to happen for that project to be productive and for it to be effective that's my strength another strength is i easily understand things quickly so 
it doesn't take me a long time to go through notes and stuff like that so those are my strengths and i would use them while to be able to plan my day and also going through my notes and writing my cue cards quickly and that sort of thing for example your strength might be you're a really good typer so for you making notes with pen and paper might not be productive for you or it might not be effective for you because you're wasting a lot of time so if you can type quickly and you can read quickly it will make your planning process much faster to make your note taking process even faster so you need to look at what things are you good at and how can you make use of them so that you're just making your life a bit more productive and then the last tip that i can give you guys is you need to prioritize the different items on your to-do list this is usually how we plan our to-do list we will say okay here's a piece of paper it's a monday i need to do this and this and this and this and this and we list out all the different things that we have to do and it range from i need to read chapter five of anatomy and physiology to the littlest thing of i need to clip my toenails so all that clutter is going to bother you it's going to overwhelm you you're not going to know where to start and the other problem is you might start with the things that are not the most important for that day so what i would do is i would say okay i've got this to-do list and there's actually an app that i use called to do list but you don't have to use the app you can use highlighters it also works the same so you would say okay this task is a priority one it really has to get down today it's urgent priority two is okay it has to happen today but it's not a real emergency it's not a train smash priority three is ah we can do it today but even tomorrow is fine then priority four is it's just one of those things they're not important they can happen over the weekend these are usually the items that you can do during your dead space or your dead time when you're waiting in line and that sort of thing so if i prioritize my task i would always make sure that i'm doing it according to those priorities and not just to take oh because i like this or because it's easier to do or because oh, i don't feel like it's like i would do something small that is the enemy talking right there <laughs> so if you can prioritize your tasks it will make it so much easier for you to streamline what you're supposed to be doing that day and you prioritize the most important things if you have more than three priority one items that means your schedule is too full you really need to reschedule that so how would you come to this point where you're prioritizing your to-do list for the day so usually what i prefer to do is before the beginning of the month i'll say okay for this month of november i've got project so and so i've got this huge video on this day i've got this test on this day then i work backwards so if i say at the end of the month i've got this project due then every single week i need to be doing something to aim towards that project so you do that for every single project so that you work backwards and then you need to require a moment to be doing every single day but just to break down your big goals and your big deadlines into smaller things it makes it so much easier so that on each specific day you know okay i need to do these things because they're leading me towards this goal and as a result you prioritize those things so the ones that are urgent or the ones that are happening quickly or the ones that have the earliest deadline obviously those would have to be prioritized even more so i really hope these tips will help you guys to be a bit more productive you just manage nursing school because i know nursing school on its own is exhausting it's tiring and it really causes you to lose your mind and if you've got other things involved it just makes life so much harder so i really hope these tips will be useful to you but like i said take what works for you implement it so that we can all be productive and be successful in this whole thing of nursing school university and just adulting as usual so until next week friday 12 p.m south african time have an awesome one bye guys bye.